Greetings, Python coders. Alan D. Moore here, and woo, it's been a long time since I have made a video. I guess the muse is just taking me other places, um, but I'm back here, and I want to make a little video today to talk about something that I think messes up a lot of beginning coders, and that is scope. So we're going to jump right in here. I've got some code up on the screen. And uh, it's just a basic guessing game, like you would make uh, for a little beginner project. Uh, we're going to import the random library here. We're going to set up a variable called tries left, set it to three, uh, create a random number from one to ten, and we have a flag value here called one that is set to false. We uh, start a while loop and just say, well, as long as we have tries left and we haven't one. We're going to take a guess, check if that guess is the number. If it is, we set one to true. If it's not, uh, we tell the player whether their guess was too high or too low. And then when the loop breaks, because either we ran out of tries or we won, then we check if we won. If we didn't win, we tell the player that they lost. So let's run that real quick. Is five. It's uh, larger, so let's go seven. It's smaller, six. I win. Okay, that's all good. But now let's say you learned about a little thing called functions. And you think, okay, I want to be sophisticated here and I want to put uh, this game code into a function. Alright, so let's copy this paste it down here and now we'll create a function we'll call it game round and we'll just take all this code and we'll paste it right here and then in our loop we'll just call game round okay and you think, well, that should work. So let's go ahead and execute that. I guess five, and I win. All right, well, I'm good. Let's see, but if I won, hmm, shouldn't it have exited if I won? After all, let's see, this line was run, so this line one should have been run, and so the while loop should have exited, shouldn't it have? Well, the reason it didn't is because of scope. Let's dig into this. Whenever you start a script in Python, you're creating what's called a scope. Now a scope means a length of time during which variables can be created and will continue to exist. So going back to our original code, I create tries left, right? That's a variable. As soon as I use an assignment operator like this, I am creating this variable. And it exists until this script exits. We say that it has global scope because this is the top of the file. So as long as this Python file or this you know, cell here in uh, in Jupyter Notebook, but if this was a file, imagine this is a file, as long as this file is executing, tries left is in scope. Okay, when this file exits, tries left goes out of scope and it's gone. Okay, so in this entire thing we have one scope and it's the global scope. As soon as we create a function down here, we are creating another scope and we call that a local scope. So within this function block we have something called a local scope. And whenever we use an assignment operator in a local scope we are creating what we call a local variable. It doesn't matter if our local variable has the same name as a global variable it will still be a local variable. So here's what's happening here. 
I'm creating a global variable or a variable in the global scope called one which is set to false. In game round in this scope I'm creating a variable called one but it's a local variable so it masks the global variable and then it is used within this scope as a local variable and of course its value is true. When this function exits any variables that are local get thrown away by Python. So this local variable here one gets thrown away. And when we're down here in our loop and it looks at the variable one it's not looking at this local variable because that's gone. That's gone as soon as this function returns. Instead it's looking at this one here which is still set to false. All right. So you might ask well how do I manipulate this global variable inside my function? Well there is a way to do that and I'm going to show it to you but I want you to understand before I do this that this is not the best way to do that and we're going to talk about a better way to do it at the end. But for right now what I can do is use the keyword global and give it that variable. Okay, what this tells Python is it says, hey, within this local scope, I want you to use this variable from the global scope whenever I say one. So now when I say one, it's going to be looking at this global variable. It's, it's going to reassign the value of that global variable to true. Okay, so let's go ahead and rerun this. Now, as you can see, when I guess the number, I won. Boy, I'm a lucky guesser. <laughs> okay, but there's another problem here. And I want you to see what it is. Let's run this again. This time, I'm going to guess a different number. Okay. We have this error. Unbound local error. Local variable tries left referenced before assignment. Lots of people get this error, this kind of an error, and they get very confused by it. What does this mean? So, tries left, we created this here. So it's created, first line of the program, right? But then, see, the line that the error is pointing to is 15. So in line 15, we see tries left equals tries left minus 1. Well, wait, how can it be saying that it doesn't know what tries left is, right? It is assigned right here. Well, the clue here is that it says local variable tries left. So here's what you need to understand. When you define a function and create a scope, Python first looks through that entire scope and looks for any assignments. Okay? And if it sees an assignment, it immediately assumes that that variable is going to be a local variable. It doesn't matter if you reference the variable first, intending it to be global. If you assign anything to this variable anywhere in this scope, Python is going to assume it's a local variable. So since it's decided that tries left is a local variable, when it tries to run this code, tries left hasn't been assigned. Okay? It would be as though we had put that line of code here. Right? Well, this doesn't make any sense because this doesn't have a value until we use the assignment operator. So what the problem is then is that we're trying to subtract a value from a variable that doesn't exist. Well, how do we fix that? Okay. So again, we could do this trick. And that works. We can give it the global keyword. We can tell it inside this function 
I want to use tries left from the global scope. And that gives us the ability to manipulate this variable and reassign it in this scope. But this is really bad practice. And, you know, it's okay for a lot of beginner code, but you don't want to write a large program that uses global variables in this way. Generally, when we write a function, we want it to be um, like a black box machine, right? Or think of like a machine from a Dr. Seuss book, right? A big, funny, weird contraption where stuff goes in and stuff comes out and who knows what kind of crazy things happen inside. All right, so we want our code that calls our functions to think of our functions that way. I put stuff in, I get stuff back, who knows what happens inside, it doesn't matter. Okay, when we bring things in from the global scope, we're entangling the outside world with our machine too much. Okay, we don't want to do that. So here's how I would rewrite this game round function. First of all, I probably wouldn't manipulate tries left inside the function. So let's take that out. Instead, I'm going to take this one variable and I am going to create it here inside of game round. And then I'm going to return it. Okay. Now, since it's returned, I'm going to get it from game round. Then, if one, we'll break the loop. And if not one, let's see, we will go ahead and we'll go ahead and subtract our tries left. Now this text here actually has to be taken out and we'll add it here. because we have to update tries left before we can tell the user or the player that they only have so many tries left. Okay, so let me review this. So now we're creating a local variable called one. And we're updating that local variable if we want, and then we're just gonna return it, all right? So now this function runs and it will return true or false depending on whether the user won the game. If they did, we'll break out of this loop, ending the game. Otherwise, we will take one away from tries left. Remember, this while loop is in the global scope. And then we'll print how many tries are left. Let's see if this works. Oops. Can't forget to use our format string there. Try that again. Okay, good. I have two tries left. Smaller than seven. It must be six. We win. All right. So just remember, whenever you create a function, you are creating a new scope. Anything you create in that scope will stop existing as soon as that scope returns. Anything from the global scope, if you use the same name, it will be masked and you will be using the local variable. Even if that assignment is done later on in the function, okay? It doesn't matter where you do that assignment. If there's any assignment to that variable name in the function, it's a local variable. Uh, one more note, you might wonder, well, what about while loops or if statements or other indented blocks? Those do not create a scope in Python. Only functions and, of course, classes and class methods, uh, but not other indented blocks. So this while loop does not create 
uh, a scope. And in fact, for loops, if you create variables uh, in a for loop, like, you know, say you're doing something like this for i in range 10 print i. You might wonder, does i exist in its own scope? Well, actually, it turns out that i will continue to exist after the for loop exits. Okay, and that's because for loops, loops don't create a scope. Uh, loops are in whatever scope they're in. If they're in a function, they're in that local scope. If they're in the global scope, that leaves i, and i will just be whatever the last value of i was. All right, so that's good to know. Anyway, I hope that helps some people. Um, just trying to get back started doing these videos again, and so this one's going to be kind of short. If you have questions about scope, feel free to ask them. Uh, keep on coding, and God bless.